Okay, this section is going to discuss the Steadicam flyer prep and operation. Um, it's going to be about 15 minutes. We're going to go through every single step, step by step, of actually removing the Steadicam from the bag, setting up the tripod, setting up the Steadicam on the tripod, then going ahead and adjusting the pitch, the yaw, and the speed of the Steadicam. And it's all going to happen live in front of you so you can see exactly what's going on. After that, we're going to show you some samples of Steadicam operation using different techniques. This program will not be entirely narrated. We're going to go ahead and let you listen to the set audio. Um, even though the audio on the set was not very good, um, unfortunately because um, we used a camera microphone, which was a big mistake, and we didn't realize until later just how bad the, um, the noise was from the uh, traffic nearby. So what we did is on certain critical times when uh, you probably can't hear the DP describing what he's doing, we went ahead and added text at the bottom of the screen to give you kind of a backup in case you can't hear him. Um, you can always just read the text and uh, you know, know exactly what he's doing at that point. So what Evan's done right now is he set up the tripod to hang the, uh, the entire device on, the entire Steadicam on. He set up also the T-bar at the top um, that allows you to hang the Steadicam arm as well as the sled. And right now he just took out the Steadicam arm and he's hanging that on that T-bar. There's a sled right there. And he's gonna fold down the monitor here in just a second. And as soon as he folds down the monitor, he's going to be able to um, take out the, uh, the battery that goes in the back of the sled. The battery also acts as a balancing mechanism. Um, you know, the, the weight of the battery um, has a lot to do with the, uh, the balance of the sled itself. So if you were to use a heavier battery at this point instead of this Hytron 50, um, you would have to readjust the sled distribution weight. Uh, but right now he's got his sled balanced for that. So now he's going to go ahead and remove the camera from the tripod. We were using it earlier. Um, he's going to remove the, um, the base plates and also the map box. And he's going to use a different set of base plates and rod system that he's got right there, which is more acutely balanced for his Steadicam flyer rig. Next, he's going to go ahead and remove the old quick release plate that was on there for the uh, Vinton tripod and he's going to use the quick release plate that's designed for the Steadicam flyer. It has special features on it that allow it to be adjusted forward and back while sitting on the Steadicam so that you don't have to remove it every single time. Um, notice now when he locks it onto the sled right now, he's going to go ahead and lock it in, lock in the quick release plate, then he's going to push back the T-bar the safety, and that's a little safety uh, knob right there, He's going to push that back, then he remove the sled, and when he removes the sled, it's going to fall forward very sharply, and that's a little bit beyond the range of where you'd want to adjust it actually on the Steadicam. So he's going to go ahead and remove the camera, remove the quick release plate, and then readjust the screws so that the camera sits back a little bit more and it doesn't fall forward so, so sharply anymore. Um, now when he puts it on there, um, it's going to have a little bit more of that fore-aft adjustment where you can actually push it forward and back um, by using the Steadicam itself but you don't have to make as much of a major adjustment. Now he's hooking up the uh, BNC to RCA adapter, a little tiny little $2 adapter. Um, that allows him to hook up the RCA cable, which is going to then hook up into the camera. It's one of those combo cables for that uh, Sony camera. Um, that way he can see on his screen at the bottom of the sled uh, what the camera is seeing. So he went ahead and swapped the T-bar around so that the elbow of the sled can now go ahead and mount on directly onto the T-bar and he can make adjustments like that. So he just went ahead and took out the special Allen wrench that he has on there and he's making an adjustment to the height of the sled and it doesn't just change the height, it changes another aspect of the uh, Steadicam. Why are you lowering it? Oh, okay, sorry. Um, I'm lowering it so that it can get um, a better speed. What speed in this particular sense means is a better ability to um, control the downward or forward pitch or speed okay. in which it rises and falls. Okay. Uh, which we'll test in a second, but it also just helps for the balancing purposes. This is uh, pitch and yaw. So by moving it forward and back, it's, it's balancing against the battery and the monitor. And by moving it side to side, it's just keeping its own weight on center. As you can tell, it's falling kind of left and forward right now. Yeah. So it needs to go back a little. Bubble level here. 
it helps us to uh, determine if, if we're balanced or not. The wind is not helping right here. Very slight movements at the very end get very precise. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to take this off this for now. Keep it close enough to balance. And I'm going to make sure... ...that my vest is properly set up. very firmly on your hip bones, look right here, but you should also feel some pressure on, on your shoulders. This adjustment adjusts for height of the, of the user. Like that's too much because now it's pulling this off of my hip bones. So this is about right for me. bottom one, you always kind of leave open, because it really doesn't matter. The top one determines your angle of ascension forward and back. Yeah. And so I know for me, I'm five and a half turns. So that's one, two, three, four, five and a half. So when I set this in here, I just tighten down this bottom one. This should be in the right set of ascension. If you're slightly leaning back, this should balance out right in front of you. That's cool. There's also control for side to side yaw, which is right here, but it's already set. Two, these two controls will set the angle this way for side to side yaw. Okay. And every operator has a slightly different feel for that. Right. Okay. When you operate a steady cam and you pull it off, you always bring the pin in and compress the arm as you're standing up, like this. That way when you lift off, Now my arms are loose right now, which is why the whole system's dragging down. So these right here control the tension in the arm itself. A good starting place is to have both arms parallel because that gives you the most amount of movement. If both arms will naturally sit parallel, then you have 15 inches down and 15 inches up. So I have this much height and that much length. So that's the most amount of travel you're going to have on the arm at any one time. This is a very light touch. I'm never using more than three fingers here, maybe four, but I'm, I'm hardly really moving it at all. I'm not controlling the camera in any way except to just keep it from moving. This right here controls the up and down, but you still, again, it's like a very light touch. It's just enough to keep it from going where you don't want it to go. If you notice as I walk, the city camera absorbs all the terrain. Are All steady cam operations happen at a slight angle from your body. It takes a little while to get used to walking slight diagonal, but eventually you do. This is actually a really good practice to learn how to keep your own center of balance. It gives you an idea of exactly what's happening. The camera itself is literally floating in air on the two springs. So, even though theoretically I kind of have to keep it going anywhere because there's a little bit too much movement, this is pointed down now. Thank you. 
wind here. It's hard for me to tell. I know, I know. Okay. Action. <laughs> Stand by. You ready, Evan? Mm -hmm. And action. Let's try it again. Start over. Start and over. action. And action.